There are so many categories under Canadian immigration regulations allowing applicants to enter Canada without a work permit or just an LMI exam work permit. This is especially good news for occupations in the visual and performing arts. Today we will be covering the various categories and criteria to check if you can enter Canada without a work permit or with an LMI exam work permit and whether other conditions apply to you. Consider this as a crash course. Hello, my name is Reza and I work with the Ingwe immigration team helping applicants move to Canada. Whether it's for yourself, your kids, your business, or all of the above, we do make it happen. Let me make this clear. I'm not an actual full-time YouTuber, but I work hands-on with our licensed team working on actual applications and communicating within the immigration department and overseas embassies on a daily basis representing our clients. These videos are made for the purpose of sharing our hands-on immigration knowledge with our worldwide audience. And if you're thinking about immigrating to Canada, well, we can help. Get a free email assessment by filling out the form below this video for eligible applicants. This is just to give you an idea of what is possible based on existing Canadian immigration regulations. The first category is who and under what circumstances does not require a work permit at all to enter Canada based on the arts. This category is based on the following regulations. As a performing artist appearing alone or in a group in an artistic performance, other than a performance that is primarily for film production or television or radio broadcast or as a member of the staff of such performing artists or groups who is integral to the artistic performance if a they are part of a form production group or are guest artists in a Canadian production or group performing a time limited engagement keyword time limited and b they're not in an employment relationship with the organization or business inside Canada that is contracting them for their services. So that means there's no employee-employer relationship. Examples include educators at music and dance festivals. If you're being hired or going to work for a Canadian employer for a longer period of time, then an LMI work permit may be required. However, if the organization that you will be working for in Canada is an internationally recognized firm, and depends on foreign performers, artistic directors, and so on, that are essential to maintain its artistic nature, then it's possible to be included in this work permit exam category. Examples can include circus staff, rodeo staff, and other performing art occupations. Essential crew for performing arts, media, TV, and radio, and so on, can also be included in this category if they meet the eligibility criteria I just explained in the first section of this video. Other examples include conductors, orchestra leaders, and other related concert-based occupations for very specific events. Musicians, DJs, street performers, theatrical performers, singers, actors, guest speakers, comedians, and other performing guests artists coming to perform for an event or limited time gig in this same category for non-work permit based eligible occupations you should consider performers for weddings which is a one-time event and are hired from outside of canada to come and perform there would be exempt from a work permit as well typically the time period for events is max five days, but exceptions are possible based on each specific case. The key with this category was to understand these two factors as part of the Canadian immigration regulations, time limited engagement and employment relationship. Individuals who work for non-Canadian TV or movie companies to produce something inside Canada, which is either completely funded from another country or nonprofit, they would also be considered in this category. They would fall under business visitor category. The key is that they're not being paid by a Canadian person or a company and not entering the Canadian labor force. Hence, they don't need a work permit. Foreign news companies, media and reporting agencies are also work permit exempt under the same regulation. And I'm quoting here, a foreign national may work in Canada without a work permit as an employee of a foreign news company for the purpose of reporting on events 
inside Canada. Second category we'll be covering today do require work permit to enter Canada based on the arts, but are LMI exempt, which is basically a very fancy word for receiving permission from the Canadian government for foreigners to be able to enter the labor market here in Canada. Not requiring an LMI means they don't need to worry about that part. This category is based on the following regulations, also known as the C20 LMI exemption category. Would create or maintain reciprocal employment of Canadian citizens or permanent residents of Canada in other countries. These countries can include USA, Mexico, Australia, Europe, and so forth. But each country has its own free trade agreement, which offers reciprocal opportunities in similar occupations and arts in the other country. Examples could include foreign workers entering Canada to keep up employment under the terms of a film co-production agreement between Canada and a foreign country, which would be exempt from an LMI but would require a work permit. Key creative staff and talent linked with Canadian nonprofit performing arts companies and organizations in the orchestral music, opera, live theater, dance disciplines may be eligible for an exemption from the labor market impact assessment. Don't forget to pay for the employee compliance fee, or at least the company in Canada to pay for the employee compliance fee, which is $230, to be able to issue that job offer. Obviously, there are other documents required, but we'll typically see that companies always miss this employee compliance fee for some reason. Not sure why. In cases where members of a performing group of greater than three persons require work permit, it's $465 for the whole group and $255 for the biometric group fee for the whole group and will apply when the group applies at the same time in the same location. The next category is for self-employed persons who can be in any industry, including arts or any other category. They're typically self-employed and want to work for themselves in Canada for a longer duration of time, although temporary. This category is called LMI exam work permit C10 for self-employed persons under the International Mobility Program. A work permit for one year, which is renewable, can be issued under this category. You should be aware that the applicant is both employer and employee in this situation. They must meet the requirements for both roles to be eligible. The regulation under this category is based on the following. Work permits may be issued under Section 200 of the Immigration Refugee Protection Regulations to a foreign national who intends to perform work that A, would create or maintain significant social, cultural, or economic benefits or opportunities for Canadian citizens or permanent residents. Some of the criteria to consider under this, this category C10 are the applicant must have at least two years of successful self-employed experience in the immediate past five years outside of Canada before applying. Usually for single entrepreneurs, there are two categories of applicants under this category, those who only seek entry for a temporary and those who seek to start or run an existing business as an entrepreneur. What are the definitions of self-employed and entrepreneurs under the Canadian immigration regulation? Well, that's important to know. Self-employed, it means a person who works for themselves as the owner of a business and rarely hires people outside of their family members. Of course, this can include many occupations such as authors, artists, film producers, writers, and so forth. Definition of entrepreneur, a person who organizes and operates a business or businesses taking on greater than normal financial risk to do so. For both of these definitions, significant social, cultural, and or economic benefit is required to be eligible. For cultural benefits, you can consider some of the factors that IRCC and the officers considering your file before deciding on your work permit. Perhaps the applicant has, is a recipient of some kind of international awards or patents, or a member of an organization that is recognized internationally, have been recognized for achievements and significant contributions to their field by peers, government organizations, or other professional bodies have made scientific or scholarly contributions in the field, have publications in the academic or industry publications, have been in a leading role in an organization with a distinguished and prestigious reputation, or are renowned for their artistic and cultural work, also known as world-class or internationally recognized. The following group we're covering now will require work permit and a labor market impact assessment to become eligible to work inside Canada. So persons coming temporarily to occupy permanent positions as members of a 
permanent organization or group in theater, dance, orchestra, house bands, and so forth, are required to hold work permits and LMIs. This includes persons coming as choreographers and announcers. Examples for the TV and movie industries which require an LMI and work permit include screen and television actors, artists involved in tape television, dramatic productions, and live dramatic performances that are being filmed, persons doing dubbing work in films, persons making a film, videotape or sound recording, individuals involved in making films, televisions, internet and radio broadcasts, and performance in Canadian-based productions or shows who are coming here to complete their work. And of course, last but definitely not least, if you're from a free trade agreement-based country with Canada, you can also apply under the independent professional category or independent service contractors. And stay tuned as we'll be covering short-term LMI exam work permit categories in our future videos for various occupations. If you're thinking about immigrating, whether permanently or temporarily, we're here to help. I can guarantee you only one point. You will know what to expect. The entire process clearly laid out for you. All the risks identified, including costs. Our legal agreements are based on payment milestones, which are linked directly to your application progression. We do not take 100% advance payment. There will be no surprises in terms of expenses, or cost just results. Our team speaks over nine languages and we help applicants from over 49 different countries in their immigration process and this list is growing every day. Click the link below this video to get a free email assessment for eligible applicants. And if you're ready to apply, you want a one-on-one -on -one session with me or one of my licensed immigration team members at Ingwe, we can also book a session directly using the consultation link below this video. And if you have questions, remember we're here weekly, live, every Thursday at 11 a.m. North America Eastern Standard Time on our YouTube channel, where we answer all of our immigration questions for free on the spot. Take care, and we'll see you next Thursday.